I read an article the other day which talked about whether plant-based is really as good for the environment as the vegans argue that it is. It showed as examples the monoculture of almonds, the food miles, as they put it, of avocados, and the habitat destruction for palm oil. Right. Let's cue the intro. Hi, Fee here, the healthy vegan author, helping people to go vegan through my books and encouraging you to stay a healthy vegan. Now let's make one thing very clear. The destruction of the environment from animals or from animal agriculture is many more times worse than the plant-based movement. Just saying. Yes, we will get the monocultural growing of plants. However, the WWF report found that 60% of global biodiversity loss is down to animal agriculture. 60%. The vast scale of growing crops like soy goes to chickens and pigs and other animals and it's putting a massive strain on all our resources from land to water and is devastating for species. Did you know that there are 23 billion chickens, turkeys and other poultry and they are the largest crop-fed animals. They're followed closely behind by the pig industry. Now, back in 1997, Cornell University did a study and found that the US could feed 800 million people with the grain that livestock eat. Now, that's 22 years ago. In that 20-year period, meat production rose from just under 200 million tonnes to over 300 million tonnes, that's worldwide. This has put massive pressure on our natural resources. Right now, meat production is going down, but nowhere near quickly enough. This goes right across all destructive plant growing. Now, let's look at deforestation. More habitat destruction is created by animal agriculture, both in the growing of plants for feed and creating grazing land to try and keep up with demand. Most people believe that de deforestation is caused by palm oil, and that's exactly what big ag What's you to think? Palm oil is grown in the forests in Indonesia, Malaysia and Papua New Guinea. And yeah, sure, it's a problem, but not as big as the one in the Amazon rainforest, where the number one reason for deforestation is animal ranching and growing food for the animals in the feedlots. After that, it's forestry or wood. There is no palm oil in the Amazon. All you have to do is take a look at the numbers. Now, in the Amazon, around 36 football fields of forests are hacked and burned and destroyed every minute. With each forest clearing, we lose about 135 species of animals, plants and insects a day. Getting back to palm oil, palm oil can actually, palm trees, whatever they're called, can actually be grown sustainably and ethically. And there are corporations who are now stepping up and demanding that type of palm oil. Animal agriculture is not sustainable. Even if we were to put a cap on the numbers right now and stopped 
uh, increasing the number of animals, we're still going to continue to destroy the environment from the pollution it causes. Now, it's actually been proven that the rainforest will regenerate itself given time. They did it in Costa Rica. Growing plants for humans can be done in a variety of different ways. There's greenhouses, there's hydroponics, there's um, permaculture, which is food forests, edible landscapes, container gardens, vertical gardens, even community gardens in the city environment are brilliant. When it comes to growing plants for food for humans, I'm sure we could do it better. But one thing is certain, when it comes to feeding the world plant-based food wins hands down as being more sustainable and more environmentally friendly than animal agriculture. Yeah, sure, we'll have monocultures with the almonds and avocado farms, but I'm convinced it will be so much better than the way the planet is being destroyed from animal ag. Plus, you know, I really do believe we'll see a lot more organic and permaculture type of farming once the farmers see the benefits in growing this way. And now it's time for the wee bonus fact. Back in the 60s, when the tobacco companies were trying to stop the Surgeon General's warning going on to the packets, they came up with some really ludicrous arguments, including that smoking was good for you. All of this just to keep you smoking. They claimed that smoking stopped Parkinson's disease. Now this of course was absolutely poo-hooed and totally dismissed as being a huge ploy on the part of the cigarette companies. But now comes the weird part. Over 60 studies since the 1970s have shown that tobacco smoking does in fact lower the chances of Parkinson's disease and actually quite dramatically. But don't go thinking that I'm about to take up smoking or start waving the flag for cigarettes. Not at all. We all know that smoking is linked to lung disease and emphysema. In fact, 80 to 90 percent of lung cancers are caused by smoking. Not only that, but there is a right toxic mix of, in the, within the cigarettes with over 7,000 chemicals added to the tobacco. So the researchers anyway decided to find out why and it seems that it is the actual nicotine in the tobacco plant that is the beneficial part. Tobacco comes from the nightshade plant family and uh, so do bell peppers, tomatoes and potatoes. Wouldn't it be much nicer to introduce peppers into your diet? Having them a bit more often. You know, let's face it, you can't go past a gorgeous red bell pepper filled with a plant-based protein like lentils or quinoa and baked. Then pour over a beautiful tomato sauce Add some gorgeous fresh dark greens like kale and spinach and you've got a bang up nutritious meal. So go for the bell, not the smoke. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you got something from this video, please share it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Hitting the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Remember to have great food, make it whole plant-based and be compassionate to all animals, including humans. Bye for now.